Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Showbox main event of the evening, scheduled for 12 rounds for the IBF light heavyweight world title elimination bout, as well as the IBA Continental Americas light heavyweight championship. Introducing first, in the blue corner, this gentleman is wearing the red trunks trimmed in white. He tipped the scale at a strong fit and ready, 174 pounds. His record an outstanding one, 46 wins, just four losses with 30 big knockouts. Originally from the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois, now fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, the former WBC light heavyweight champion of the world and currently ranked number three by the IBF, please welcome Montel Ice Griffin. His opponent in the red corner. Wearing the white trunks trimmed in black. This gentleman tipped the scale at a strong and fit and ready 173 pounds. His record unblemished, undefeated, 17 wins, no losses, with 14 big knockouts. He is currently ranked number one by the IBF in the current light heavyweight champion from Detroit, Michigan. Please welcome Rico Suave Hoy Jr. Fighters to the center of the ring. Okay, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want a good clean bout. This is for the number one rating, 12 rounds. Rico, anything on his trunks or below, I'm going to consider a low blow. Montel, I'm going to give you just that little black part. It's a little borderline, okay? All right, touch him up, come out up the bell. May the best man win. Oh, the tail of the tape in this one is very revealing. Hoy, five years in age advantage, seven inches in height, seven inches in reach. In the only thing he doesn't have an advantage over, Griffin, experience. Stay in your corner. And I might say attitude. Well, we'll talk about that <laughs> one, Steve. The rules, there is no three knockdown or standing eight count. Frank Garza is our referee. Rico Hoy in the biggest fight of his life, and Montel Griffin in red with utter disdain for him. Sure, he, re they, he respects Hoy, uh, his right hand and such, but he says, I have beaten much better. And he has. Steve, I agree with your assessment of Griffin. He does not necessarily have to get inside. You know, his... Throughout his career, the quick hands and reflexes enabled him to box effectively from outside. Let's see how much he still had. His legs looked like they were taken away by Antonio Tarver the last year. Well, Griffin landed the first left hook he threw in this fight. Nice quick left to the stomach by Griffin. Griffin sees very well. Head movement. And Thel Torrance, his trainer, wants Griffin to accentuate that 5-7. Of course. By, by fighting even lower. Hey. Letting Hoy punch down. Huh? Angelo Dundee's old line, right? If you're short, fight shorter. If you're tall, <laughs> fight taller. It makes sense. Oh, nice right hand by Hoy. And here comes a left hook lead from Montel Griffin. Very cautious, both guys, but both guys have landed early. I have a question for you, Nick. If Rico Hoy's fighting for this, for this opportunity to fight for the IBF title, what were the four belts in the ring? I, uh, <laughs> Unbelievable. I, I thought you packed them when he came from New York. But Jeez, I mean, had that extra suitcase. I'm not knocking Rico. He can win all the belts he wants. That's fine. But that's where boxing's at today. You know, a guy like this, young prospect, he's already got four belts. <laughs> what a difference in experience. Griffin, a member of the 92 Olympic team, 302 rounds. I'd have to check the stats. My guess is that's a showbox record. And Rico Hoy's only had 53 rounds of professional boxing experience. Hoy, Hoy taking his time there, coming in for the first time with that overhand right behind the jab. And Steve, he doesn't want to force anything, Hoy. But I think the jab should be something to punish Griffin not with. Not only blind him, not only throw him off guard. But I think that's really what they want to do is just stick it out there and 
have a trouble, Griffin, and set up that right hand. Yeah, I think the reason they want the jab to be just an introductory punch is they know that Griffin sees punches very well. So if he sees the jab, he's less likely to see the punch that comes after it, whether that be a straight right or a hook. Sort of blind him with the jab, and then land the next shot. And here comes Griffin doubling up the jab, trying to get inside, now looking to fight low. And maybe when he's inside, they're unloading that hook, and that's what Torrance wanted him to do. Counter left hook, it's the shot he used against Tarver, who was a southpaw, so you know he's going to use it against Hoy, who's orthodox. He's got Hoy's respect a little bit. Hoy gets a little careless there, looks a little wild trying to follow up, but here comes Hoy rifling that jab this time. Pretty good first round and a tough one to score. Yeah, the problem for Griffin, same as it's been for a large part of his grip. Was he busy enough? So this one's scheduled for 12. Griffin says he's been in with the best, and he knows all about Rico Hoy, and Hoy says, no offense, I respect him, but it's my time. Here's the strategy from both. Just utilize, like I said, utilize my reach. I'm 6'4", uh, I'm my tail's around 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, so I want to just use my, my jab is the key in any fight, the jab. I'm a 5'7", light heavyweight, that, that fight like a 6'3", light heavyweight, so. That basically sums it all up. Uh, I do things that other people don't do, and um, I give everybody problems. And I just be, be if just being myself. If I be, I be myself when I be in the ring, I ain't worried about nobody else. Boy, and he does have attitude. See, we're talking about Griffin. He just doesn't feel that Hoy's faced anybody. And there's no doubt about it. You talked about resume, Steve. There's no comparison. No. But that doesn't make Rico Hoy an inferior fighter. No, that's exactly, and it's exactly what makes this fight so intriguing. <laughs> you know, it's your classic uh, up-and-comer who hasn't fought the best guys against the older, perhaps faded, perhaps not faded veteran who's fought everybody. Well, this is Rico Hoy's third appearance on Showbox, and it's his biggest step up. We're really calling it, as you said at the top, graduation day for him if if he passes this major exam and this is absolutely a big one well what he's finding out right now you saw in the first round he landed one good right hand but griffin rode with that punch a little bit montel griffin's very hard to hit flush griffin lunging in with that jab and they don't want him certainly pulling straight back i think the book they feel on rico is he doesn't turn a lot very straight shots so just don't do anything stupid by backing straight out. And Montel doing a decent job. You're right, Steve. He's not getting hit as cleanly, although he gets blitzed there with a little tricky combination. Why is Griffin such a good defensive fighter? You can see some of the reasons. His feet are always firmly planted on the canvas. He doesn't move his feet a lot. Good balance. That's, of course, a key. And his eyes, I mean, he just sees the shots coming. He must because his left hand is low there, and they're, they're telling him, watch that right hand. They fully expect Rico Hoy to unleash it. Why not? That's his beauty punch. That's sure. his power punch. And another thing about Griffin, you know, how many prospects have we seen who either try to block shots or, you know, their defense is shaky. Monte Griffin moves his head. That's the right way. He actually learned a lot of boxing from his boyhood idol, Muhammad Ali. Kind of funny to think a five foot seven light heavyweight would fight like Muhammad Ali does, but defensively he's not all that different. He slides, he moves his head, not always back the way Ali did, but side to side. And that's why he's hard to hit. His left hand is low again, but Hoy's not going to unload that right hand without coming in behind the jab and closing the gap a little bit. And now he seems to be trying to walk Montel Griffin back down, but showing him the respect as he backs off a little bit more. Hoy is in white, Griffin in red. Montel, the former light heavyweight champion of the world. That was long ago and far away, Steve. Nick Hoy's thrown five jabs in the last 30 seconds. Not one came close to landing. And Griffin's did as he doubled his nicely. With all that reach disparity, Griffin landing the more telling blows here in this second round. Of course, Steve, you really could see it. Griffin does see very well. Knows when to punch and not leave him hang his, hang his chin out there and be open. Because it's always risky when you're the shorter guy. You're still going to have to get within punching range, not that you have to be head against the guy's chest.
Okay, another good round. Oh, two more rounds, just like that, okay? Take a deep breath. Listen, as, as, he, as he slipped, as he slipped them, as he slipped, look here. Okay, okay, look here. Okay. 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 Your jab is okay. moving. Okay. Keep, 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 keep doing number slide. So what if you ain't hitting I mentioned in round two, Rico Hoy jabbing, as you think a taller fighter should, his punches aren't landing. Is it because he's not committing to the jab, or because Montel Griffin just sees it coming and knows how to react? Montel Griffin anticipates punches well. See him slipping that right hand. I think he's fighting an excellent fight, Griffin. Well, this is going to be all about adjustments for Rico Hoy. He's fighting the smartest fighter, along with the best fighter he's ever fought. He has to make adjustments. Right, Montel on. Griffin not afraid to lure Rico Hoy in, into his wheelhouse. And Bell Torrance telling him then make him pay, just make him miss and then hook off that jab. In tight. So they really want him to use that left hand on Rico Hoy once he's close enough. And there, really lightning quick left from Griffin backs Hoy off again. And Nick, that was a five foot seven light heavyweight out jabbing a six foot three light heavyweight. We talk about adjustments. Some of the adjustments I would recommend for Rico Hoy. Punch to the body. He tried one right hand to the body in round two. He was successful with it. Even though Griffin is short, punch to the body, mix it up, and that jab by itself is nothing. He's got to throw in combination. Three, four shots. Maybe one lands. Good point, Steve. But still Rico Hoy not really flashing any kind of a power jab. Now he tries to set up behind that jab with the unloading the big right, but he was short with it. And Hoy's cut. Yeah, Hoy's cut. It was a butt, and Hoy is cut. Right eye. Right. He's mad about it, but he's got to shake it off. Accidental headbutt. Time in. Box. Well, good call by Garza, right? He yes. said it was an accidental butt, which is exactly what it was. I saw it. And and the interesting thing is Garza didn't call the doctor over. Maybe he doesn't think the cut is that serious, but Hoy is cut over the right eye. Yes, and he's pawing at it now. It's over the outside of the right eye, so it could be in a worse spot, but it's something that's definitely troubling Rico Hoy here. It could change the complexion of this fight. A veteran, Montel Griffin, goes right after that eye, Steve. He did, and he landed a one-two. You know what, though? Rico Hoy, let's keep in mind, he's facing adversity now. He faced adversity when he fought Prince Body Ajama. He got knocked down in the second round, came back to win that fight. Got hurt by Richard Hall in his last fight. Came back to score a knockout one round later. He's, he's, answered, the, he's answered the questions thus far, and he has another one right now. Does he have to fight with a little bit more urgency? He certainly cranked it up here. And here come the power punches. Griffin shaking it off with disdain, but now he's against the ropes and covering up, but a booming left hook in return from Griffin as he's fighting well off the ropes. And now they continue to slug and just swap power shots. Wow, did that change in a hurry, the fight, huh? The whole oh. tenor of the fight. Crowd's on its feet here in Sault Ste. Marie. Now it's back in the middle of the ring. So they both taste each other's power here in the third. Boy in white and Montel Griffin in red. It was good for Hoy that he backed Griffin to the ropes. He's got to punch to the body there, but the most important thing is he's got to remember to bring his right hand back when he punches because Griffin's going to be flying with that left hook counter. It's, and it's apparent, Steve, that Rico Hoy really wants full extension on his shots. He could shorten up inside and show him that he could do that, but he really likes to keep Griffin at the end of those punches. And he gets tagged first there in an excellent third round. Sit down, baby. Sit down. Deep breath. Get. Spit right here. Listen to me, baby. Don't force nothing. Every time you start shooting out, you drop in your right hand. You let him hit you with that left hook. You understand? Tuck. Bend on the knees. You understand? Keep the right hand high. Got to keep it high. You know what I'm saying? A more water. Come on, watch that pull. Action from round three. Let's see the butt that opened the cut over Rico Hoy's right eye. There it is. Can't miss it. Both fighters recoil. Ouch. 
Certainly nothing blatant. And Rico Hoyt, at least in excellent hands, Bill Miller is a terrific cut. Oh, Bill Miller is legendary. Of course, he was the first and longtime trainer of James Tony. So Bill Miller knows a lot about Montel Griffin because Griffin beat Tony twice. <laughs> Montel Griffin fighting very much under control. Stop! Time! Neutral corner. Give me your glove. Time in! Frank Garza removes some superfluous tape from Griffin's gloves. And now they start again here in the fourth. Rico Hoy with his own blood on his trunks, the result of that accidental headbutt in the third round. And now it's Griffin cranking up that left hand. Waiting, waiting, but until Hoy unloads, Griffin picking those shots off. Making Hoy fall short. He's just got that sense of distance, doesn't he, Steve? He sure does, and he's drawing Rico Hoy in. He's doing exactly what he wants to do. He's already established the fact that Hoy's jab is not going to be much of a scoring factor. Double jab from Griffin, and then he backs off neatly. Go Hoy, very cautious. Danny Smith, his trainer, wants that right hand up and that guard tight. Now it's Griffin trying to faint Hoy into a mistake. Backs off and reloads. Giving him these veteran looks. Steve Hoy is a little reticent and confused, huh? I'm not saying totally confused, but he's very cautious. And he just got hit with a lead left hook. Yeah, he's got to try something new. You talked about urgency. Well, it's only round four of a 12-round fight, so I don't think there's a sense of urgency yet. But he doesn't want to give away too many rounds either. Montel Griffin, who planned on accelerating after round four, has done very well in rounds one through four. Right. Good sign for Griffin. Hoy's cut is under control. The blood has stopped for now. So it doesn't seem to be a factor. Boy trying to get his distance and control the distance throughout this fight and then overhand right and then he gets banged with a nice counter from Griffin. So Rico Hoy paying the price for trying to close the gap here. And you can see why long arms can be a disadvantage. When Hoy throws that right hand, it's a long punch because he's a tall fighter with long arms. Griffin's answer is a short left hook. Griffin's fighting a beautiful fight, Steve. Well, his trainer, Thel Torrance, who's one of the gentlemen and one of the best trainers in boxing and a disciple of Eddie Futch, who, by the way, used to train Griffin, uh, said that camp was great. You know, he was bragging to us about how this was Montel's best camp in a long time, and so far it's showing. More focused. You know, it's one of those last stand things. It obviously gets his hackles up, Steve. We, we saw him in the meetings. And he doesn't consider himself some opponent for some up-and-coming guy who can't match his resume, can't begin to match it. Griffin connects with another left hook there. So he has definitely gotten the respect of Rico Hoy. And after four, Steve, how do you have it? I have it a shutout for Montel Griffin, 40-36. I'm not quitting on Rico Hoy yet. He's just got to make some adjustments. It's a long fight. He's bleeding again. Okay. Okay, now listen. Work, no. Right. Now you big, more up, listen. Right. Now listen. I don't want to show him anything. After, after you use that jab, don't step back your hands up. Look for another shot. You do that jab. Keep the head moving. Keep the head moving and keep drifting off. Okay? Right. And anytime he start his combinations, once he start them combinations, once you slip one of them right up the center. Let's slip it right in the center. Okay? And be smart. Not slim. Right between your legs. Okay. Real smart. I need one more round like that, Montel. Right. Okay? One, one more round. round. One all, round. I, all I want is one round at a time. That's all you have to do. Okay? Right. Be smart. All right. All right. Let's go, right. Baby. Okay? Sound advice, Stel oh, yeah. keeping him on, you know, keeping him focused, not over talking anything, not six or seven things to do. Griffin knows what to do. And, and he gave him sound advice. He told him what to do. Instead of just saying, keep your hands up or be more aggressive. Good trainer matchup here. Felt Torrance, one of the older trainers, one of the wise veterans of the game. Danny Smith, who we're both very high on, one of the better young trainers who trains Rico Hoy. So good matchup. Absolutely. Both guys from Vegas. And Bill, Bill Miller has that uh, cut under control. Can't see any of the blood right now. so. 
Again, it doesn't seem to be bothering Rico Hoy. He was bleeding after the uh, fourth round, but it stopped once again. And Hoy trying to get a little closer, it seems, Steve, with that jab, and Griffin seems to eat him up. And Hoy swallows a couple of left hands from Griffin. Bell Torrance wants Griffin to follow up, especially once he's inside. But that left hand seems to be the big weapon for him. And not a hellacious hitter by any means, as you mentioned, Steve. But so smart. Boy won't be lured into that trap. At the same time, he's got to start putting some offense together. Overhand right from Griffin, and then he wells away with a left that clocks Hoy. And something to consider, Nick, the butt rule here. Four rounds have been completed. If for any reason the referee rules Rico Hoy cannot continue because of the cut that was opened by the butt, we would go to the cards. Rico Hoy is undefeated. And looking to graduate from Showbox and fight for the title. But he has got to get past a man who hasn't given an inch and has fought masterfully here, Montel Griffin. Good head movement. He's just, again, so hard to hit flush, Steve, as you said. This guy does not look like a guy playing out the string, and that's good. No, he's not. He's 34. He's been the distance. Remember, that he has 302 rounds on those tires, Nick. You wonder late in the fight whether Rico Hoy can rally enough to do something to turn this around. Well, it's gut check situation. As we said, he was down in the second round of the Showbox debut 15 months ago, and then he basically swept the fight. But that was against an opponent who just can't match up to Montel Griffin. But again, it is the fifth scheduled for 12. Griffin shoots that left. Picks off the jabs from Hoy, who's short again with his left. Fire it once, and it's Griffin getting through. Now Griffin short himself. Oh, he ran into a forearm, it seemed, there. Quiet round, Nick. Yes, very quiet. Tough one to score. Rico, listen, I need you to be smart, baby. Uh -huh. You ain't throwing nail hook off the jab. Uh -huh. You haven't did that at all yet. Yeah. All right, you got to take a little bit of chances. When he's dipping, though, throw it still. When he's dipping, when he's dipping and leaning forward, he's getting ready to jump with a left hook, or he's getting ready to leave with that jab. You understand what I'm saying? But when you get close to him, you got to come underneath, but you got to push him. Because okay. every time you throw a right hand, he's going to throw a hook. So be prepared for that. Okay. Be prepared to catch the hook and fire back. Two shots. Whenever you catch, either throw the right hand left hook or the hook right hand. When you catch, don't just catch and then be looking. Second out. Instructions clear, Two. Steve. Rico Hoy's got to let it go a little bit. Let his hands go. I like Round that. Six. I like that advice, though. Again, great Round advice six. from the corner. Hook off the jab. By hooking off the jab, he can keep his right hand pinned to his chin and take away Griffin's uh, counter hook. Yeah, we haven't seen any burst from Rico Hoy. Single shots here with the jab. And that vaunted right hand really hasn't landed flush. If it did, Montel Griffin could have been out. He's hit some guys flush, and they, they go, go, go. He's been waiting, lunging in, and that's what Danny Smith had warned Hoy about, saying you've got to make him swallow a left hand and return. If it makes Hoy miss. One of the things that makes Griffin so difficult to hit, gives you little different looks, you know? Look, look at him. Oh, boy. Does Slides it. his head to the left. He's not doing anything. He's not punching. He's not jabbing. But he gives you different looks. That makes it very hard for Hoy to think about which punches, which combinations would be the right ones to land. Yeah. Hoy's lost any kind of fluidity here. He's never really had it. It doesn't look smooth. And credit Griffin for certainly just taking him out of sync. Boy, just measuring with the jab now. His right hand looking to block. Really not in a great position to throw. Griffin seems to sense it, but he is warily maintaining his distance. He's feigning and making Hoy think again. Here comes the big right hand from Hoy as he tries to back Griffin up.
Griffin playing an elusive game here. Steve, it's a guy who really saves his legs. It's not a wasted bit of energy from Montel Griffin. And that may very well be a key in allowing him to fight 12 rounds, you know, and do what he's been doing for 12 rounds. He doesn't waste energy. Should Hoy force the pace a little bit more? Hoy's going to have to change up, do something different. Okay, my break, my break, my break. I don't see a lot of adjustment so far by Rico Hoy. The experience factor right now is the biggest factor in the fight. And remember, Hoy, how many rounds has he fought his last few fights? Yeah. Four, five, six, eight rounds total in his last four fights. That doesn't bode well for going 12. But the pace is so slow and careful and studied. They're not boxing in there, they're playing chess. And, and they're certainly not fighting. So going 12 shouldn't be a problem for either guy, I would think, at this point. But if you have to assess it, Griffin is giving Hoy more problems and vice versa. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Hoy just is not creating any problems for Griffin. So he's able to box when he wants to box and sit out when he wants to sit out. And still win rounds, it seems like. We're about to hit the halfway mark here in Sault Ste. Marie. Rico Hoy and Montel Griffin. America's Fight Night is on Showtime. October 2nd, it's a huge night of boxing with a triple header featuring former heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko wants the title back, and he wants it bad, but first he must go through one of the top contenders, Daveral Williamson. Also, it's the long-awaited rematch of the action-packed fight between junior middleweight champion Inferno Phillips and Kasi Muma. Plus, 2000 Olympian Jeff Lacey becomes the first in his class to fight for a world title. Saturday, October 2nd at 9 p.m., Klitschko, Williamson, Phillips, Muma, plus Vanderpool Lacey. It's America's Fight Night on America's number one boxing network. Round seven. Round seven. Ready for the seventh here in Sault Ste. Marie in the red. Former light heavyweight champion of the world, Montel Griffin. Rico Hoy's in white, undefeated, but looking to play catch up, Steve Farhood. Rico landed a big right hand the last five seconds of that sixth round. Virtually nothing else happened in the round. I thought that was enough to give him the round. Let's, let's see if he can continue. That cut doesn't seem to be much of a factor over Rico Hoy's right eye, Nick, does it? No, not at all. Credit Bill Miller. It really is a neutral factor in this fight, but so is Rico Hoy's offense for the most part. And Steve, it's interesting as we look at the uh, what happens when they start going deep? Well, if we're in round seven now and you see Griffin, just a slight <laughs> advantage in experience. But interesting, 18 fights for Griffin, only three KOs late. Griffin, not always the most crowd pleasing, but I, I just admire the fact that he places his punches so well and seems to maneuver Hoy into getting the worst of him, making him miss there. Well, there's a long way to go in this fight, Nick, but when you look at Montel Griffin's record, you realize he outboxed James Tony twice. I mean, how good do you have to be as a boxer to outbox James Tony? The question, of course, is he's 34 now. Did he still, does he still have enough left to hold Rico Hoy off? Is Rico Hoy good enough to beat him? And right now, Griffin's ahead in this fight, but there's six rounds to go. Hoy runs into okay, a little left hand. Back. That's that step sneaky back, left back. that keeps Montel Griffin's offense uh, together here. He's either countering with it, suckering Hoy in. And sometimes just getting off first with the left if Hoy is reluctant to pull the trigger on his offense. There's that lead left from Griffin. Didn't really land. Waiting, waiting, picking off punches, and they're really going low. Hoy off balance and not able to fire. Probably a good idea as he tries to reload here. Another thing about Griffin makes him very difficult to fight. Join the list, right? There's a lot. It's a long list, but every good fighter knows how to counterpunch. He just doesn't give you any opportunity to counterpunch. When is he led in this fight? True. Even jabs. I mean, there he goes. Double, double jab, but. Almost never leads with a with a power shot. Very rarely leads with a left. He's not given Hoy much to work off of. Uh, he 
He's clipping him here with that left hand there once again, and Hoy has to reset. And he just looks like he has the pins knocked out from under him. There's that lead left hook from Montel Griffin. Inviting Hoy in. Timing his rushes, it seems, tying him up at the right time. So Griffin putting on a bit of a clinic here, and after the bell, they flurry. Griffin, 34 four years old, and as we said, he doesn't view himself as just some trial horse. Uh, they want Montel to wake up a little bit more offensively, and I agree, Steve. He has laid back here in the last couple of rounds. He's had his moments, certainly back there in the seventh, but the six wasn't much for him, and I agree with you. He lost that round. But he is very much in command. What does Hoyt do, Steve? Obviously has to get more offensive here. Taking chances against this guy is dangerous, we know. Well, he's got to take chances. He's The fight's been fought at one tempo, and it's been a very slow tempo. That's not to the advantage of the younger fighter. That's for one. Two, maybe it is time to try to step inside a little bit. Mix his punches up, throw to the body a little bit. And he hasn't hooked off the jab. Now, I understand that's a hard punch to land against Griffin. He never shows you his head, but that would be a good idea. Yeah. Boy, at least putting that jab in motion now. And he may as well because he really hasn't landed that money punch of his, the right hand flush. It's almost like he's so frustrated before he even tries it, he stopped believing that it will land. Now the infighting, and Montel sweeps with that left hand and then resets distance, and boy, trying to control range here and find Griffin at the end of his punches. Remember the strategy he talked about early, Steve? Hey, I'm just going to run up my shots and get out of here. I'm taller than this guy. There's no sense to go to war with him, but I'm going to hit him and move. But first, you got to hit him. <laughs> right. Nick, th this fight is also a challenge, not only for Rico Hoy, but for the judges, because not a lot is happening. Now, I thought early in the fight, Griffin clearly landed the better shots with his left hook. But as the rounds mount, very few shots are being landed, and the, refer the judges really have to pay very, very strict attention and measure, you know, maybe three punches from one guy that might have not landed flush against two from the other that might not have landed flush. It's, it's tough. Yeah, when you really get down to it, you know, 90% of it is the clean, effective punching. Sure. Enough. We could talk about defense and ring generalship, but they're minor in this equation. But I like talking about ring generalship because Montel Griffin definitely has it. Well, he's showing you something very few fighters who are very short can do, which is outbox a much taller rival. He just yeah. knows where to be and where not to be. Look at the size. Look at the, look at the size difference. It's gigantic. Seven inches. You're not going to see that. You'll see it in the heavyweight division on occasion, but nowhere else. Another tough round to score, Steve. Very, very few clean punches. And there's a couple of lefts from Griffin. Oh, overhand right from Hoy as now he cranks it up and gets angry. Look, better round, baby. How you feel? Talk to me. All right. You look good. Keep working that left hand, keep touching. When you throw a shot, push him off balance. Don't let him try to counter you with that hook. His speed is slowing down. I know you can see it. His speed is slowing down. The hooks are getting wider and slower. You got to keep your hand speed fast. Okay. That way, he's really going to hesitate to throw a shot. Okay. You understand? Yep. Take this right over now. Right. That's right. He's slowing up. Keep backing him up. And keep being keep fast. Small you're back. Keep your teeth with your hands up. There All right. Don't play with your hands down, period. Because he keeps sliding, so don't force nothing. Okay. Put him in the back. Shut out. Go. Steve, I, hit, I think you hit it perfectly. This is a chess match, and you want to see somebody creating more aggression, creating more offense, creating more openings. Tactically, it's interesting, but at the same time, you, I really want to see more offense. I don't know if we're going to get it. 
Boy, still the reluctant warrior against this guy. He's got to be wary. Rico Hoy maybe trying something new here. Moving to his right a little bit. What he's got to do, he's got to keep that right hand pinned to his chin because Griffin's offense is pretty much solely that left hook. And Rico's got to use that left hand, even if he's not going to score points with the jab. Maybe jab, jab, left hook. And it's, it's tough for him because Hoy is a right hand puncher. And every time he throws his right, as his corner told him properly a few rounds ago, every time he throws that right, Griffin's going to counter with a left. Griffin leading with his left there to the chest. Has that left hand, he dips out of danger. Griffin in red, the shorter guy by far. As Steve indicated, now Griffin runs into a left hook, one of the first we've seen from Hoy, and Hoy thinks he's got Griffin. Certainly not hurt, but a little off balance and maybe in the retreat. But combination punches from Hoy. Four of them at a time there. Hadn't seen the left hook at all, Steve. We just saw it. Rico Hoy, hands high, backing off. He still wants to create that distance, meaning he's got the reach, and he wants Griffin at the end of those punches. Full extension on that shot. There goes a better jab from Hoy. Griffin trying to keep Hoy off with that left, and Hoy unloads, missing a couple of power shots. Advice from Del Torrance is don't let Hoy walk to you, Steve. And don't let him close the gap. You create the distance. And it's Hoy backing off. Now he's in white. Griffin very short with that left. Now it's Hoy taking a couple of lefts flush. Another one. All right, my break, my break. Griffin with the superior tactics. Maybe not the most entertaining offensive thrust we've seen from fighters, but doing more to win these rounds. Rico Hoy trying to solve an elusive, clever puzzle in Montel Griffin. And now it is getting late. All right, bell, bell. Whoa. Bell. Frank Garza showing a good chin. Yeah, he did. He took one flush, didn't he? The, the most flush fight, uh, punch okay. of the fight. Right. What I say, bell, okay. Action from round nine. Look at Montel Griffin. Does he see punches? Tough to hit flush. And then Griffin, the shorter man, jabbing well. And right. listen. Bell, bell. Oh, it's about seven shots each after the bell. Well, who won that round? That's a tough one. That was tough, because Hoy landed the combination early. Right, I still gave the round to Griffin. How do you have it, Steve? 88-83, Montel Griffin after nine. Rico Hoy playing serious catch-up on Steve Farhood's card. He just hasn't done much offensively. There's no doubt that Griffin's landed perhaps some more quality blows. That could be questionable, but certainly the volume. We got to have time. Go to your corner. I need a new pair of gloves. Oh, grip the gloves. Like I need a new glove. pair of gloves. This will take time. They're going to have to cut the glove, the left glove, for, off of Rico Hoy and get a new pair of gloves. Gloves came apart. Time out. We're replacing the gloves. Okay? All right. So they're, they are calling time here. they got to replace both of them, of course. Let me see the other Steve, one. Steve, very briefly, who does this favor? Griffin, if anybody. Um... The pace isn't draining right. to a 34-year-old fighter. 
But well, as Garza checks Griffin's gloves, it's okay. a good move. Looks like there's a looks like there's a defect in the gloves. Defect okay. in both fighters' both, gloves, both, says both Frank fighters Garza. Gloves. So, These are still okay. So Frank Garza says that Griffin's gloves are still okay, but it sounds like borderline at this point. Yeah. So what do you do? Don't punch as hard? I mean, <laughs> You could just have them take their gloves off and fight without <laughs> gloves. Now, the defect, listen, Nick, you, the defect is that the attachment is coming apart. That one it came all the way apart. Frank, the, the, what's detached? The attachment from, for the thumb. From the thumb. Okay, the thumb. The thumb. The, uh, then the actual glove, the body of the glove, the detachment has come apart, meaning with that, you get thumbed in the eye. Right, they're not thumbless gloves anymore. Wow, they've, they've done a very quick Absolutely job on that left no glove. Absolutely no tampering because... These are going through the same thing. Okay, so that, if there was a question of somebody tampering with the gloves, because okay, his Frank Garza says thing. both, glo both wrong, corners' right? gloves are okay, defective, then that isn't an issue. Wow, great job by Garza and great job by the corner of Rico Hoy to make that. Boy. That uh, very short delay. Minute 15, and they've got new gloves on Rico Hoy. I think it took a little longer uh, wow. with uh, Cassius Clay and Henry yeah, Cooper in hey, London hey. a few years ago. <laughs> Comes Montel Griffin closing the gap. Now backing off, waiting for Hoy to try that right. Missing is Hoy with the left. And really, Hoy has not hit Griffin solidly all night. Hard break, hard there he gets backed off back. with that little baby left hand. It's just that little 18 inch shot from Griffin, Steve, that's doing the most damage in this fight, or at least scoring the most points. So it's volume breathing, really. See, we're in the 10th scheduled for 12 here in Sault Ste. Marie, and Rico Hoy's undefeated record in serious jeopardy on our cards. Hard break, no punching, no punching, no wrestling. Well, you, you, this, this brings back memories of Mike Tyson in his prime, not that Griffin fights like Tyson, he doesn't, but the fact that Mike at times out-jabbed and outboxed taller guys, just because you have a seven inch reach advantage means nothing if you don't use it properly. The reason Hoy isn't using it properly is because Griffin's not letting him use it properly. Absolutely right. And, you know, we talked about graduation in school for Rico Hoy, but it's a clinic and it is a schooling he's getting from Montel Griffin. Well, safe to say that uh, Hoy will probably not fight anybody as difficult as Griffin for a long, long time. Yeah, I have to give him credit. It's a quantum leap, and he hasn't lost this fight anyway, Steve. But, you know, we're only in the 10th, but at the same time, it was gutsy. He wanted this step up to fight for the title, and so far it's been too big of a leap for him, it looks like, as Griffin has controlled this fight once again. Punching when he wants to punch and resting when he wants to rest and winning the majority of the rounds and just really maneuvering Coy into looking bad. There's a right hand and a nice left hook from Griffin. His best power explosion of the night. And where did that right hand come from? It's as if it's the first one Griffin's thrown and it caught Hoy by surprise. True. Big round for Montel Griffin. Rico Hoy eats a left hand on the way in and Griffin's starting to hot dog a little bit. He'll run out and push off Hoy at the bell. Wow. As long as he's picking his feet up, he's okay, okay? All right, all right, be smart. Steve, I think it's a good idea. Certainly for me, I'm not scoring this thing officially to temper my comments on the fact that these are some close rounds and when there's inaction, you know, it could be either way. So the criterion's very difficult and sometimes very abstract. Very true. Griffin apparently marked over the left eye. There's swelling there as well. Jim Strickland, the cut man, was working on it between rounds. But the cuts, in both cases, are certainly not deciding factors. So Steve, uh, having said that how tough it is to score, how do you score it? 98-92, Montel Griffin. Okay, then. Let's get down to it. About five minutes left in this fight. Hoy has to gamble big time. How does he do it? Well, he's got to initiate exchanges at this point, and he's got to do that by leading and, and risking getting countered. And get Push Griffin back a little bit and try to extend his right hand and keep firing it. Steve, what about Griffin's power? He's got 30 KOs, but what does that mean against the big man here, Hoy, who has been down, we saw. 
but at the same time, can he walk into a knockout shot? You know what? Griffin's beaten a lot of good fighters in his career. He's knocked out almost nobody. So right. even with the 30 KOs, when he fights the better guys, he turns boxer, and he's not concerned with power. Nice left hand by Griffin there, and if he's not concerned with power and Hoy, that's the book on Griffin, perhaps how elusive he is. And difficult to hit cleanly and how he wins rounds with the ring generalship and volume punching. But it's easy for me to say, but Rico Hoy's got to really go for it again again. Really go for it. Got to climb all over him. Really start sticking punches together. We just haven't seen it the entire night. Spread of the elusiveness of Griffin. He continues to change angles. Now he's moving to his right again. He's making it totally uncomfortable for Hoy to find any fluid stroke here. And you have to ask at this point, did this fight come too soon for Rico Hoy? You asked that question before, Nick. The only reason it's relevant, hey, Rico Hoy's not getting banged up in this fight. He's not getting hurt. It wouldn't be that bad a loss, but it's for a chance for a world title. So, so you know, how far back is it going to send him? Well, the opportunity's there. He's 29 years old. He'll get more opportunities should he lose this fight. But if this was just a loss to an experienced fighter and Rico Hoy wasn't fighting for a chance for the title, it wouldn't be as bad. I think it's a little more damaging because of what's at stake. Rico Hoy is a Michigan native. We are in Michigan. He lives, lives in Phoenix now. It's something to be considered. Just hasn't been. Oh, right hand by Griffin. He stung Rico Hoy with two good shots. First a left about a minute ago, and then a nice straight right hand. Break, break, and Hoy back, just can't find the target. And he's got a round to figure it out. Give me a call. I got the call rag. Huh? Action from round 11. All of a sudden, Montel Griffin introduces the right hand into the equation. He didn't throw a right hand for six, seven rounds in this fight. He pushed that a little bit. You saw him lean forward as he threw it. It was still flush. What are the judges supposed to think after seeing that? Now listen. Now I want you to be smart. Don't give him nothing. Be smart with it. You, you, okay? Be smart with it. Every time he gets hit, I want you to feign him out of it. And you step up with your jab, do it twice. Okay? Once you get your combination. Chin tuck. This is last or rock. All right, let's go get that IB up next, baby. Get that, get that spit button. Whoa. Oh. Okay. Okay. Three minutes for Rico Hoy to turn this fight around, and he's done nothing to suggest he could through 11. He just has been taken out of his game plan. The advice was don't force anything, but now is the time to step on the gas. Obviously, Montel Griffin isn't biting at anything. He's not running into shots. He's not turning into shots. Boy can't cut the corners on him. The jab isn't working. He could be a flat out of answers, Dave. I don't think he ever had any answers in this fight. I just haven't seen a lot of adjustments from Rico Hoy during the fight. And that's what, that's what gaining experience is all about. He's never going to forget this moment. And you know what, Nick? Hey, we all love Slugfest. We all love big punching fights. This isn't one of them, but you got to appreciate Montel oh, Griffin I if agree. you're a boxing fan. I mean, yeah, uh, maybe not every fight you want to see a guy fight like this, but how many fighters, world-class fighters, have this kind of defense and anticipation and reflex? Yeah. Very few. Exactly. Look at him get off first there with two lightning left hands. And again, a guy with a colossal disadvantage in reach, seven inches. Eight inches in height. Montel Griffin, 5'7", 6'3", Rico Hoy. Has not been able to keep Griffin at the end of his punches at all tonight. A frustrating experience for Rico Hoy. And what he could take away from this perhaps is maybe just a useful tool in terms of learning what not to do the next time against a guy this slick and clever. Well, instead of graduating, He's been stuck 
for a little added time in the classroom with a professor, that's for sure. Against his will, maybe, but nothing he can do about it. Tony, that headbutt not a factor, how huh? the blood stopped long ago. But the only issue here is can Rico ha Hoy get unbelievably fortunate here and find Montel Griffin's chin flush? Well, he's not going to get lucky because he's not moving his hands, Nick. Well, that's the kind of jab I wanted to see earlier from Hoy. A little more oomph on it, huh? Oh, a big right hand from Hoy, his best punch, and Griffin shakes it off. But that was his best punch in many rounds. And look at Griffin trying to close the show with conviction himself, leaving nothing in doubt in the hands of the judges. But Hoy coming on big, but certainly running out of clock. Montel Griffin, Rico Hoy saluting the crowd as if he won. Steve, it's hard to believe he did. How did you have it officially? 117-111, Montel Griffin. Hoy did a little better the second half of the fight, but fell too far behind in the first half. Montel Griffin looking rejuvenated, and why not? He came in knowing that Rico Hoy certainly wasn't taking him lightly but was looking at him as a stepping stone and an opponent to bigger and better things. Steve, we couldn't help hearing the corner of uh, Montel Griffin saying they're going to call Roy Jones now. And really, this absolutely plunges Rico Hoy down a few notches and it thrusts Montel Griffin into another title shot. And we would have to say you put the smart money on him inevitably fighting Roy Jones again if Jones wants him. Well, Jones has to fight uh, Glenkoff Johnson for the IBF light heavyweight title. Jones will be favored to win that fight. Hey, Jones is coming off a one-punch knockout loss. We have to see what he has left. But if Jones wins that fight, hey, it's been seven years since Montel Griffin had his two fights with Roy Jones. He beat Roy the first time by DQ, got knocked out and won in the rematch. So we're here for Showbox, the new generation, and surprise, surprise, who knows? Let's go to Ronnie Duncan, who makes our main event official. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give both of these fighters a round of applause. Going 12 rounds for the IBF light heavyweight title elimination bout. The winner will fight for the IBF light heavyweight championship of the world. We go to the Kuwaitan scorecards and we have a split decision. Referee Dale Grable scores this fight. 116, 112, Hoy. Judge Gary Merritt scores this fight, 115-113, Griffin. And Judge Bill Pay scores this fight, 116 to 112. The winner, and he'll be fighting for the IBF, like heavyweight championship of the world, Rico Hoy Jr.